Thai elections were held on Sunday, and while the final vote count will not be published until May 8th, for unspecified reasons, um, we still have a preliminary vote count and some interesting results. And before we get deeper into the matter of this video, I want to apologize in advance for all the names I will mispronounce, and it will be quite a lot, so I apologize. The most important distinction in the Thai elections was between anti-military parties, Phalang Praharat, which is the party of the military, and parties which would go into coalition with Phalang Praharat. As of now, it looks like the party with the most seats will be for Thai, which is an anti-military party. It is also a right-wing populist and mostly a vehicle of former premier Tash King Shinawatra, a deeply corrupt businessman who declared a war on drugs, killing more than 2,500 people, used emergency powers to crap down Muslim insurgency movements in the south of Thailand, and abused his powers to grant privileges to his companies and cronies that made up between 5 and 30 percent of the state expenses while he was in power. Meanwhile, it seems the party with the most votes, but not most seats, will be Phalang Praharat, the military party, which is led by Prayut Chan Ocha, the leader of the current military junta. The party with the third most seats will be the Future Forward Party, which is a centrist party led by a billionaire, and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name, but you can see it on the screen, which supports decentralization, a social safety net, environmental sustainability, a land reform, women's and LGBT rights, and a new constitution drafted by the people. It is however important to note that, as it is very pro-business, while it does support the things on paper, a lot of them are contingent on the well-being of economic interests. Their electoral success is somewhat surprising and seems largely based upon the youth vote. Next in terms of seats is the Democrat Party, the oldest party in Thailand, which has formed the opposition to Tuskin during his reign. It has formally excluded going into coalition with Phalang Praharat, but is widely expected to change its stance, since it has also allowed itself to be used by the military after the 2011 coup. Apart from that, it is fairly conservative. In response to its underwhelming performance, its leader Abhishit Vichayefa announced that he would step down. This is not the first time he has done this, however. It also happened after disappointing results during the 2011 elections, only to be re-elected afterwards with 96% of the vote by about 330 party leaders. Running out the top 5, who the lion's share of parliamentary seats will go to, is the Bum Chai Thai party, who initially took a lot of its policies from the Phu Thai party, but has since gone in a somewhat different direction supporting the legalization of marijuana and ride-hailing services like Uber. It has however not excluded forming a coalition with Phalang Praharat and some of its politicians support the junta. I want to highlight one more party, the single issue for Thai Forest Conservation Party, which gained one seat and will use it to reduce plastic consumption and forest destruction. Since long before the elections, the military junta used its powers for putting the thumb on the scale by measures such as intimidation of opposition leaders, control of the media, and the Thai Senate is entirely junta appointed. Furthermore, the Asian network for free elections informs us that on the day of the election, the military used its power to intimidate voters, particularly in the rural areas, and also some reports are out of vote buying. Also, the current results are still preliminary because the final announcement of the vote has been postponed until May the 9th without any explanation, and the vote counting procedure of the elections seems to open the door for abuse. All in all, if the votes for anti-military parties are measured against those for parties which support the military, no large shifts seem to have taken place since the 2011 elections. Before making this video, I tried to get some sense of the feelings of the Thai population itself and what I could gather was first of all a strong split between youth and older voters and second of all a feeling of apathy towards democracy I think especially among the older voters. So I read a lot of statements in the vein of it doesn't really matter whether we have a democracy or whatever system of government. Uh, for normal people, it's all the same. 
and at least the military keeps the streets safe which seems to be true and that even at, to some extent the current military junta reigned in the powers of for instance the police and I think it's important to note here that while we people living in western societies place a lot of value in democracy and I think we have good reasons for because if not through democracy or if the people themselves are not the ones to decide who exerts power then how could we ever ensure that power is exerted um, in the interests of the people so I think there are really good arguments for democracy but for nations which are not very interested or which have not this historical context which we have for democracy I think the obsession we have with democracy seems quite weird and especially in cases such as Thailand where the parties which traditionally exerted the power have not been very acting very much in the interests of the people and where the democratic institutions have largely been limited to voting and not a lot of democratic infrastructure apart from voting has been set up and to be honest this is also something which I am very skeptical about in our western nations that all the democratic institutions which we traditionally had have been eroded and dem democracy seems to now be limited to, to voting for certain parties which have mostly been predetermined um, but for nations in which those institutions were never even built up um, I think it's very hard to see the advantage of democracy above some other system because if the, the choice you have is between corrupt business leaders and um, military strongmen then it's not really much of a choice at all or it's at least a very bad choice and I also think that in societies where the flow of information is even more restricted than in our societies there is even less you can even do about for instance installing new parties and I think the internet in some ways has been a very strong um, or at least has the potential to be a revolutionary in this context because the internet is actually hard to control and for this very reason I am enormously skeptical of skeptical to say the very least of these new measures that are taken to restrict the liberty on the internet and the freedom of information on the internet and I think they will almost certainly be abused but my hope is that the internet is just too hard to control because we have such um, programs as Tor and such networks as Tor and because you can almost always take um, almost always just re um, replace your infrastructure or places infrastructure in some other country which will take it so for instance um, all the um, all the information sharing devices such as Sci-Hub are in this and that country which is I think Sci-Hub is right now in Taiwan where they are accepted um, because I think they bring probably at least some revenue to the countries and for this reason it is hard to really stump out services such as Sci-Hub which is great because otherwise we would have to rely on publishers who have been terrible at distribu distributing information 
but very good at um, rating in profits. So my hopes are with the in internet that it ensures a better flow of information and with for instance parties such as the Future Forward party even though it is certainly a very imperfect party but it seems to at least be better than the alternatives which have been up to try um, up to about um, until this point and I hope that the Future Forward party will use the seats it gained which is is the third strongest party as of right now and use those seats to actually provide a strong opposition if not through um, legislative measures because it probably will, will be very restricted in that regard then at least through uh, vocal um, denunciation of all the authoritarian measures that the military party and also even before that the um, the parties of Taskin have instituted. It is also important to note that all of this is not especially new in Thai politics. There have been 19 coups since um, I think since around 1850 and of them 12 were successful so in a sense the military has always been in the background and a very very strong force within the Thai politics and yeah this is not I don't think this can be counted as the huge loss for freedom and democracy and liberty that some um, Western media pundits make it out to be it is more part of a long ongoing struggle for more democracy within Thai politics and while it may, may not be as um, as nice an, a result as has been wished upon it is at least a result with some future hope I would say and well lastly old people die at some point and it seems that the older voters are the ones that are especially holding up those more authoritarian parties and that younger voters really yearn for an alternative so there is some potential here <laughs>